Baseball. Live from Oakland, Fox Sports Net 2 presents the Dodgers as they take on the Oakland A's. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening to you, wherever you may be. It depends upon your perspective. The Dodgers feel they're very much in a division fight, trailing Arizona by three and a half. And for Oakland, they have more or less given up as far as winning the division. They've been buried by Seattle, just like everybody else in the West. So they're trying to get the wild card. And tonight, after having been shut out last night by Mark Mulder, the Dodgers will really see the best pitcher that Oakland has, and that would be Tim Hudson, a 20 game winner last year started off slowly two and three this year since then he is seven and two for the Dodgers Chan Ho Park will be on the mound with a record of eight and five they've each beaten the other Chan Ho Park beat Oakland back in 1998 and for Tim Hudson his first major league victory was against the Dodgers in 1999 we'll get to the starting lineups we'll have it all coming up for you right after this Sportsnet 2 presents Dodger Baseball, brought to you by Pennzoil, protection under the toughest driving conditions. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher, Gatorade, is it in you? By Craig and Auto Parts, where we say you can do it. We're here to help. And by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines celebrates 30 years of freedom. 30 years, one mission, low fares. Everybody and a very pleasant good evening to you wherever you may be it's blue skies here in Oakland at the Coliseum a gorgeous summer's evening albeit slightly on the cool side if you're from Southern California and a very light breeze rippling the flags in the right field corner indicating at least for the moment that the wind is blowing out to left for the Oakland A's a ball club that has won four in a row they are hosting the Dodgers who have lost two in a row so a couple of little streaks on the line we'll take a look at the Dodger lineup getting ready to face Hudson for the Dodgers they will have Tom Goodwin who batted ninth last night in center field against a right-hander leading off Mark Rasolonic at second Gary Sheffield hitting third and Sean Green in the cleanup spot Eric Karras at first Paul LaDuca will be the designated hitter Adrian Beltry who has been slinging a hot bat on the road this year at third, batting seventh. Alex Cora against a right-hander. He returns to the starting lineup. And as always, with Chan Ho Park on the mound, Chad Cruder is behind the plate. On the mound for the Oakland A's is Tim Hudson. He was just 26 years old. And you know, when he celebrated his birthday, it is the 14th of July, so tomorrow he will be 26 years old. He's out of Columbus, Georgia. He is listed at 6'1 and 165 pounds, so he is long and lean, but more importantly, a 20-game winner last year and 5-0 and in the month of September. This year, he has been absolutely dynamite in night games. His record at night, six wins and one loss. In the daytime, three and four. So you put it all together, and he has a record of nine and five. Since he won 11 games two years ago and 20 games last year, should he win tonight or whenever he does win his 10th, he will join a select group of pitchers who are able to win that many games in three consecutive seasons, 10 or more, in Oakland history. That means people like Mike Moore, Dave Stewart, and Bob Welsh. So we will see how Tim Hudson goes. His first big league victory ever two years ago, and it was against the Dodgers. Starting off is Tom Goodwin, and Goodwin checks in, hitting 248. Hudson into the windup, and the right-handed deals fastball in for a strike, and the count 0-1. Goodwin, like all of the other Dodgers, tied up last night by left-hander Mark Mulder, struck out twice, but he did get a base hit. Hudson rocks ready, and the tall right-handed back, and it's low and inside, and the count one ball and one strike. Hudson has a fastball, a wonderful splitter, and a great changeup. And tonight, Mark Mulder just observing as Tom Goodwin hits a ground ball to the right side. An easy out. Menachino takes care of it. And just like that, one away here in the first inning. 
for Art Howe and the Oakland A's. They are still trying to recover from a dismal start. The first homestand that the A's had, they were one and eight at the end of 26 games. They were eight and 18. Since that time, they've played 12 games above 500. So for the first time this year with their four game winning streak, Arts Club, two games above 500, trying to make a move on the wild card. Mark Grasolonic, who has not been swinging the bat well, shies away from a pitch inside, ball one, and they count one and oh. Several of the Dodgers came over to the ballpark early, almost in the entire ball club, to take some extra hitting. The 1-0 pitch on the way. Grasolonic bangs it the other way for a base hit into right field. So maybe the extra hitting. When you think about it, three days off, a little workout Wednesday before coming up here, then being shut out last night. So the Dodgers needed some extra work. They got it. And now Grasolonic with a base hit. The batter will be Gary Sheffield, and like all of the other Dodgers, he was completely shut down last night. He had an infield single going one for four. The Sheffield always swinging an important bat. That note about 18 home runs and 12 have either tied or given the Dodgers the lead. So the Chef with Grasolonic at first and one out. Mark taking his lead held on by Jason Giambi and Hudson a very slow delivery to the plate right handed deals line drive at third Chavez back to Giambi double play so Gary Sheffield ripped it and Eric Chavez caught it and doubled up Grasolonic just like that and at the end of half an inning no score The Dodgers hit into tough luck in the first inning as Gary Sheffield lines into a double play. So now the A's coming up, and here's the way they will stack up against Chan Ho Park. Leading off in center field, Johnny Damon, the second baseman, Frank Menachino, and then Jeremy Giambi, the DH. Jason Giambi, the American League's most valuable player last year, hits cleanup at first base. Miguel Tejada, who is blazing hot, hit one out last night, the shortstop bats fifth. Terrence Long, who had played a lot of center field, but has moved over to right. Eric Chavez, the third baseman, batting seventh. Ramon Hernandez behind the plate and Billy McMillian in left field batting ninth on the mound Chan Ho Park Chan Ho beat Oakland back in 1998 so he is 1-0 lifetime Chan Ho has won four of his last five decisions he has also had five no decisions in that string and Chan Ho going to work now on Johnny Damon Damon, a left-hand hitting center fielder, shows bunt, takes a strike, and the count 0-1. Damon started off the year. He hit 211 in April, 222 in May. He was really struggling, and now he's on fire. The next pitch to Damon, he has a look, and that's outside. One ball and one strike. For the last 20 games, for a three-week period, Johnny Damon has hit 341, so that's moved his average up a bit. The next pitch to Damon is taken down at his feet. Ball two and the count two and one. Chan Ho Park, of course, pitching in the All-Star game, one of the more memorable moments, 93-mile-an-hour fastball to Cal Ripken, and Cal ripped it out. But now it's all business as he's in quest of win number nine. Chan Ho ready in deals, and he is high, and he has fallen behind now. Three and one to Johnny Damon. Damon has already said he figures to test the free agent market. The A's knew when he was coming over here, it was the end of his contract. So he is in a pretty sweet spot, especially if he keeps hitting. He takes low, ball four. So the A's are in business immediately as Chan Ho walks Damon. And the batter now will be Frank Menachino. So Menachino checking in, and the first thing he does is check with Ron Washington, the third base coach, Mike Quaid over at first. Rick Peterson is the pitching coach for Art Howe. Menachino hitting 277, having a good year. 
right-hand batter, stocky and very heavy for an infielder. He takes a strike. He is only 5'8", but he weighs 200 pounds, and yet, as muscular as he is, a fire hydrant kind of a guy, you could see him playing third base. You could see him catching, but you really can't believe that he's the second baseman, but he gets the job done. So Menachino waiting has a look at a strike that balances the cable now with a runner at first nobody out and he has Menachino no balls and two strikes. Menachino had a stretch from May to almost the end of June where he was hitting 340 but for two weeks now he's hit under 200 so it comes and it goes for the best of them. Out of a stretch goes Chan Ho works the hitter with a fastball swung on and missed. And down goes Menachino. So one out and Jeremy Giambi coming up. Jeremy Giambi was the designated hitter and batted third last night. He had three hits. Three of the 15 hits piled up by the Oakland A's. And interestingly enough, 12 of the 15 hits coming with two out. And Giambi singled in the first inning with two out last night, led off with a single, and had another two out single in the fifth inning. So Jeremy checks in with his more famous brother, Jason, on deck. Can Ho Park set, throws over to first. Johnny Damon back on the bag. One thing Damon has not been doing, he has not been running at all. He has not even tried to steal a base in his last 19 games. He has one stolen base in his last 32. Jan Ho Park deals high and outside. One ball and no strikes to Jeremy Giambi. So Johnny Damon, when he goes, his percentage is on the right side, but he has just not been running. So Chan Ho Park trying to keep an eye on him while at the same time concentrating on Jeremy in the pitch high and away and behind now two balls and no strikes and a balk has been called so down to second base goes Johnny Damon and immediately Chad Kruder and Alex Cora go to the mound to try and console Park for Chan Ho interesting that would be his third balk and for a fellow who is anything but a rookie, of course, you don't expect Chan Ho to make that mistake, but apparently he gave his stretch a little bit of a flourish and stopped twice before delivering. He leaned over and stopped and then seemed to stop again, and his right shoulder went back almost as if he was going to turn, and the balk was called by the crew chief, Mike Riley, out at second base. So we will see just how important that is. No pitch, of course, on the balk, so the count is one ball and no strike. So Jeremy Giambi, he is the younger of the flying Giambis, as they call him up here, and he takes low and the count two balls and no strikes. So Jeremy and Jason. Jason Giambi is 30 years old, the on-deck hitter, and Jeremy is about four years younger. Now Chan Ho deals off speed, and that's on the outside corner for a strike. For Jeremy Giambi, he'll be 27 in September. He started the year as the left fielder, then they shifted him to right, then they made him the DH, and he wasn't very happy about that. But now, since that's his job, he is excelling. Chan Ho Park deals, and that one is just inside. Pretty good breaking ball. Jeremy showed a great deal of discipline to take it. As Giambi says about the DH, day in and day out, it's boring. It's stagnant. But if that's what they want me to do, I better find a way to do it. Well, he's finding it. Certainly the last couple of months, he's been red on. The 3-1 pitch coming up is swung on, hit over the head of Grassolonic into center field for a bloop single. Here comes Damon to score. And just like that, the Dodgers are in a hole, one to nothing. So a walk, a balk, and a bloop single. And I'll tell you the truth about Jeremy. He has had four hits so far in this series. Three of them have been bloopers. And that's all that was, but he'll take it. The old story, they look like line drives in the box score. So with Jeremy getting a base hit and a run batted in, Damon carries it over. And now the big guy coming up, 
and that would be Jason Giambi, last year's MVP. It is an interesting point with Oakland. They have tried, I think, eight or nine different guys to hit cleanup, and over the year, the cleanup hitters have batted 193. So they decided to put Jeremy, the DH, and make Jason the cleanup, and they got 15 hits last night. Who failed to get a hit? You got it, the cleanup hitter, Jason Giambi. He takes a strike, and the count, 0 and 1. He had an incredible year last year to be the American League MVP, joining Vida Blue, Reggie Jackson, Jose Canseco, Ricky Henderson, and Dennis Eckersley as Oakland MVPs. He dribbles one up along third, and it stays fair for an infield single. So first, Jeremy gets a blooper into center, and now Jason hits one that looked like it came out of the end of a hose and just dribbled up along third base and somehow or other stayed fair. Pretty good sinker, and he hit it off the end of the bat, and just like his brother, he will take it, and all Beltry could do is pick it up at the bag. So a walk, a balk, and then the strikeout, a bloop single for an RBI, a base hit by Giambi. Gary Sheffield killed the ball and lined into a double play in the first inning, and so it goes. And the batter now is Miguel Tejada. And Tejada, an outstanding young ball player. One remark we heard about him is he can be a superstar and the only thing that slows him down is when he tries to play like a superstar. He hit his 20th home run last night. Chan Ho deals, fastball high, ball one. One and oh, the count to Miguel. 25 years old, that's all, out of Bonnie in the Dominican Republic. He had 30 home runs and 115 RBIs last year. So he figures to be with the A's playing shortstop for many, many years to come. Chan Ho in trouble and deals high and inside. And the count two balls and no strikes. So a walk and a balk, a bloop single for a run, a dribbler up along third for another base hit. So it doesn't make any difference. You don't throw the little ones back. And it is one to nothing Oakland. Takata, right-hand batter. Miguel waiting as Chan Ho has said, right-handed deals and slides this one low. Now he's one pitch away from loading him up. And on deck is Terrence Long. The three and all the count. Tejada with 115 RBIs last year. So he can hit. And the pitch to him is a strike at the knees in the count three and one. One of the things that shows a marked improvement for Tejada, he is learning now to lay off the bad ball, and that has helped him considerably. And he's up there now three and one. Chan Ho trying to get out of the inning. The right hand is set, ready and deals. Tejada drives one foul down the left field line out of play. And the count three and two. The Giambi brothers are out there. And that, of course, is a very popular act up here. The flying Giambis. They have homered in the same game off the same pitcher this year. That's the ninth time in baseball history that that's ever happened. The Wayner brothers have done it several times. So did the Ripkins. So did the Guerreros twice. So two on, one out. Three and two, the count to Tejada. We'll watch the Giambis. So is Chan Ho Park. They're not going, and a crack bat foul ball. So he'll have to get another stick, and time out for the moment. Another thing about the Giambis, while we have a moment, they combined for more than 50 home runs last year. They had a total of 53, and that made them only the sixth brother duo to do that. Joe and Vince DiMaggio, Lee and Carlos May, Bob and Iris Musil, Tony and Billy Canigliaro, Henry and Tommy Aaron. That's it. So the Giambis figure prominently up here, but Jason Giambi is going to go free agent. 
During the spring, they offered him a six-year deal for $90 million. Everything was great with the numbers, but he insisted on a no-trade clause. They said no way, and so his agent, Arn Tellum, took the, the proposal off the table. All right, Chan Ho ready. Another look. Runners at the ready with one out. They're not going, and the pitch is swung on and missed. So Tejada might have gone after ball four, just after we're talking about how he's learning discipline. And he also tried to uppercut that high pitch. And, of course, that's virtually impossible to do. So Chan Ho picks up his second strikeout. Tejada certainly helped out. And the batter now is Terrence Long. Terrence Long, who came over from the New York Mets in the Kenny Rogers deal, He's only 25 years old, another young ball player as the A's build for the future. And the first pitch is grounded to Grassalonic. Mark is up with it and throws to Karras, and that's the inning. So, Chan Ho, a victim of some bad luck, but babbled his way out of it. It could have been a lot worse at the end of an inning, one nothing A's. Forget the Coca-Cola Dodger Family Pack. You get yourself four reserve level tickets, four Farmer John Dodger dogs, four Cokes, and a parking pass for just $39. The upcoming pack days, July 18th against the Brewers, the 29th against the Rockies, Aug 1 against the Reds, August 5 against the Cubs. Sean Green in the box, and he shies away for the pitch in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. The one thing about Tim Hudson, he throws a good fastball, a very good splitter, and a very good changeup. The right hand that comes back, and it's fouled away. But the key for Hudson, he throws the splitter and the change almost the same speed. The changeup may be 81, the splitter about 83, and with the same arm action. And that means a lot of times the guys are way out in front. If they even hit the splitter, it'll be a little ground ball. The strike two pitch on the way is a fastball in there, strike three call. I was just going to sum it up. What happened with Hudson, the American League hitters were starting to lay off the splitter and the off-speed pitch with two strikes. So what did Hudson do? He began striking them out looking with fastballs. And sure enough, he had green 0-2, and, and I know that from the scouting report, Sean had to be thinking, here comes the splitter or the change. Instead, he was frozen on the fastball. And the batter now is Eric Carroll. Hudson ready and delivers, and a little chin music up and in, ball one, one and all the count. Those who follow the A's all the time say that Hudson is an incredible competitor. The fastball grounded to short. Tejada is on it, plenty of time with Karras, and he throws him out, two down. Another thing about Tim Hudson, they're talking about what a great young pitcher he is. And really the only question about him, I think, would be his durability. I mean, after all, he is only 165 pounds. And there are some people who think that he will not hold up over the long haul. However, he could easily be inspired by, oh, somebody like a Pedro Martinez, right? Tim Reddy and delivers in the fastball in there for a strike to LaDuca, who's the designated hitter, and the count on one. LaDuca led off last night. He was the catcher. He walked and went 0 for 3 otherwise. And for LaDuca not to get a base hit, that's a little bit of a surprise. He probably it's a one-hopper speared by Eric Chavez, who throws him out. Nice play by the Oakland third baseman. So the Dodgers are gone one, two, three, and at the end of an inning and a half, one nothing, Oakland. Bottom of the second inning, one to nothing, Oakland, and of course Oakland trying to catch Cleveland in the wild card. They're six back. Boston one back at Cleveland. The feeling in the American League is with Pedro Martinez on the shelf for the middle of August, Cleveland is the team to really worry about. And Oakland is afraid of one thing. They're afraid that John Hart, the general manager of Cleveland, will make a big deal, come up with a pitcher that'll help him win the wild card. Meanwhile, Oakland trying to get its act squared away. They have long since forgotten about the division. They're 19 back of Seattle. 
Chavez, who caught the line drive and doubled up Mark Rasolonic in the first inning and then made a good play on the ball hit by Laduca. Eric now, left hand batter, checks in to lead off and looks at a strike and the count 0 and 1. Eric Chavez hitting only 245. He has been a disappointment, but he is a youngster and promptly swings, fouls one back out of play. And the count 0 and 2. Eric Chavez, born in Los Angeles, he won't be 24 until December. He had a very good spring last year and wound up hitting a very solid 277. Off to a slow start this year. Fouls another one back and they count 0 and 2. Well put together, a six footer, a little over 200 pounds. He got a big break when Olmito Signs was hurt and Chavez just took over the job. He swings, fouls another one back. And the count remains 0 and 2. The big story in Oakland, of course, the July 31st trading deadline. And what the A's have to do is realistically, in about two weeks, decide whether they are in the wild card race or not. Chavez chasing a bad ball and strikes out. Jan Hopar picks up his third, and we have one out in the second inning. If they feel that they cannot pass Boston and cannot catch Cleveland, then people like Jason Isringhausen, Johnny Damon, and Jason Giambi, all ready to go free agent anyway. They might make a move. So it will be a big decision. Billy Bean and the owners, Steve Schott among others, do we trade them for young players for the future or do we have a shot at the wild card? And Damon has already said he would test free agency. The fastball to Ramon Hernandez, a strike, and the count on one. Hernandez has never been able to swing a hot bat, but he had the key base hit last night. He hits one foul off to the right upstairs in the count 0 and 2. Hernandez last night hit one just over the bag at first down in the corner. That double came in the sixth inning and it took what was a very tough one to nothing game. It made it three nothing. Then he scored on a Damon double that made it four nothing. And then behind Mulder the A's one going away six to nothing. Can Ho deals down and away. We can report that Scott Spezio of the Anaheim Angels hit a home run against Kurt Schilling. So the Angels are leading one nothing over Arizona in the second inning. Arizona has lost five in a row. Ken Ho delivers a comebacker but it gets away from him and as he chases it at first base safely is Hernandez. So Chan Ho unable to handle the ball hit back to him and I think it got a little bit more than his glove and Hernandez with a base hit and the batter will be Billy McMillian. So it was a breaking ball. Chan Ho tried to backhand it and squeeze his hands together and it went off his body and Grasolonic never had a play. So now Billy McMillian will check in. Million was claimed off waivers from the Detroit Tigers and he was eventually called up and joined and he had a lot of things on his mind. He attributed a 119 batting average to the fact that his wife was expecting their first child. Ken Ho delivers and Billy whacks it into right center. Green going back to the track at the wall and he can't make the play. Green down on his back. The ball retrieved by Goodwin. A run is in on a triple by Billy McMillian. And the A's lead two to nothing. Billy McMillian feels like a million because his wife presented him with a baby girl the end of June. For Sean Green, he went all the way to the wall, ran parallel to the wall reached up and just flat out missed it as the ball and his glove appeared to miss by inches and then Green went down on his back so it was
was pretty easy for Hernandez. Meanwhile, McMillian was almost heading for the plate, jammed on the brakes, and wearing number 13 on Friday the 13th, he checks in with a triple. And it is two to nothing in favor of the A's. The Dodgers have to play the infield up with a runner at third and one out. Well, what a start for Chan Ho Park. Chan Ho ready and deals. Damon fouls it back. I really think that Sean Green might catch that ball eight or nine out of ten times. But for whatever reason, maybe the setting sun, unfamiliar ballpark, whatever, he just missed it. So it is two to nothing in favor of Oakland. The comebacker is cashed in just as the balk was cashed in. Damon waiting, Chan Ho deals, and that's fouled off third out of play. And the count 0 and 2. So Johnny Damon with two strikes, so there's no thought of a squeeze right now. Ron Washington over to talk to Billy McMillian, who runs very well. On deck, the leadoff man, and now Frank Menachino is in the on-deck circle as Damon tries to do something with McMillian. Can Ho deals, and it is low. Ball one, one and two the count. So a walk to Damon and a balk, and then a bloop single gave the A's a run in the first inning. Now a comebacker that got away from Chan Ho, followed by a triple that seemed to get away from Sean Green. And it is two to nothing A's. Chan Ho Park deals, and it is swung on and missed. That's his fourth strikeout. McMillian holding at third, and Menachino, who struck out, coming up. So Billy McMillian, a one-out triple is there, an out later. Menachino struck out in the first inning. Frank 0 for 1. You would think when you see the spelling of his name that it would be Menachino. After all, it's Chino, California. But he pronounces it Menachino. And he's had a rough July. Ken Holt delivers a change, and it's low. Ball 1, 1 and 0. Oh. The A's, a very good ball club last year. The division champions pushed the Yankees to seven games in the championship series. So they've been a bitter disappointment so far this year. Ken Ho delivers, and that's down. They had that terrible start, one and eight in the homestand. Lost 18 of the first 26. They lost five out of six in their first meetings with Seattle. And they've been trying to recover ever since. And now, for the first time this year, Art Howe has them two games above 500. Chan Hall Park ready. A look over at McMillian. Back to Menachino. A fly ball to right field. Green has this one in his sights. And Sean makes the catch for the out. However, the triple and the comebacker together for a run. And at the end of two, two nothing. Oakland. Sportsnet 2 presents Dodger Baseball. Brought to you by Dodge. In a perfect world, everything would be different. By Aflac. Without it, no insurance is complete. And by Pep Boys. All you need to know is where to go. Pep Boys. The A's trying to make it five in a row, leading the Dodgers two to nothing. And the Dodgers, no doubt, like Sean Green, wondering about Billy McMillan's home ball, a triple off the wall that I would think Sean Green felt he should have caught it, but he didn't. And the run came in. So the Dodgers undaunted in the third with Beltre, Cora, and Kruder against Tim Hudson. Ball one. for two weeks now a hot hitter batting 360 with 11 runs batted in way out in front of the chain as we told you Tim Hudson has a great splitter and a great change and what he was doing he was getting ahead with fastballs against American League hitters and then almost a ritual either a splitter or a change that'll take care of Belcher 
So the American League hitters, once they had two strikes, they would shorten up looking for the splitter or the change. And instead, he would start firing fastballs. That was just a high change and Beltry way out in front of it. One out and Alex Cora. That's a strike. Another thing for Tim Hudson. He has wonderful control. Of course, the Dodgers saw Mark Mulder, and he just shredded the strike zone. One walk. Little pop fly on the off-speed pitch. Jason Jambi. And just like that, two down. The batter will be Chad Kruder. In looking at Hudson's performance and talking about his control, his high five. Most of the time, none or one. His last two games against Anaheim and Arizona, he did not walk anybody. In fact, counting all the hitters tonight, eight of them, he has faced 71 consecutive batters since his last walk. Tim Hudson. And 26 years old tomorrow. One and all. That's the fastball on the corner. One and one to Chad Kruder. Another left-hander going tomorrow for Oakland and another fine young pitcher, and that's Barry Zito. So Zito will be on the mound against Luke Prokopek tomorrow. Prokopek wearing a, a ceramic-like nail to try and help the blister area, and he reports it has really helped considerably. When he tries to throw his slider, it just seems to tear up the middle finger. Driving to dead center, Johnny Damon with a lot of room to roam. And the Dodgers are gone in the third. So Hudson has only faced nine batters. He has given up a base hit, and he leads 2 nothing. Don't forget, stay tuned after the game for highlights of all of today's sports action. We'll present the Southern California Sports Report. We'll have the Dodger postgame report and a lot more. The Southern California Sports Report coming up next. Faces in the crowd as we go to the bottom of the third. Two to nothing in favor of the Oakland A's. The A's averaging a little more than 25,000 a game. They had a little over 18,000 here last night. Jeremy Giambi, who got that bloop single in the first inning to drive in a run. He has found a home as the DH and batting third. Ball one. That's a strike. Oakland eight and five against the National League. The Dodgers are five and eight against the American League. A bun foul. So Jeremy trying to bunt his way aboard. And the count one and two. For the Dodgers, this is their 90th game. 72 games left, 38 on the road, 34 at home. And Jim Tracy points to a date on the calendar as Jeremy strikes out. Jim Tracy exudes confidence, even though his ball club has been banged up with the loss of people like Andy Ashby and Darren Greifert. They lost Fetters for a couple of weeks, and he's not sharp again yet. They lost Beltry for spring training in the first 35 games of the season. But Jim says that 
Arizona is now going to go through a very tough stretch. Arizona leading the Dodgers by three and a half. They have lost five in a row. They're losing tonight one to nothing in the third inning. And Jim feels that Arizona is going to struggle. Remember they had a three and a half game lead last year at the break and wound up like ten back. So the ball club exudes confidence. They really and truly feel that they will catch Arizona and pass them. One and one. Ball two, two and one. Arizona had a similar stretch coming up at the Dodgers face when they won nine in a row. Two and one to Jason Giambi. Ball three. Marquise Grissom, who got the bad news, a six-game suspension and an undetermined amount of money is a fine. He has appealed. The Players Association has appealed. And all we can do is wait and see. Meanwhile, Tom Goodwin patrols center field. Oh, Giambi, a big rip. Three and two. Dodgers had a workout on Wednesday, and wouldn't you know, Eram Boca Chica turned an ankle. They say his ankle swelled up like a grapefruit on the side of it. He has gone back home, and he would have seen a lot of work up here, especially Mulder last night and Zito tomorrow. And with two left-handers, the Dodgers could easily have played Boca Chica and Grissom. But last night, they were forced to play Tom Goodwin. Three and two. Two-nothing A's, third inning. And that's pulled down the right field line in the corner. Green over to play the carom. Jason with a bad leg on his way to second, and he is in there. He has had a tight right calf. It missed about oh, four or five of ten games. He could DH, but he couldn't run at all. And that's what made it so close. A 100% Giambi steams into second base easily on that ball. Instead, on the bad leg, it made it somewhat close. So Giambi goes racing in to pick it up. That would be his 26th double. So the one out double brings up Miguel Tejada. Tejada who struck out on a bad ball with two on in the first inning. Chasing a three and two pitch up out of the zone. Oh and one and that was right in the zone. For Tejada like so many other young ball players they had a tendency to chase pitches up because of the high strike this year. And as you probably know, the high strike has had an effect. It has cut down on walks. It has added strikeouts. Cut down on total number of home runs, although there have been several big home run hitters who have been sidelined by injury. Mo Vaughn, Mark McGuire, just a couple. That's popped up the carrots. Two down. And the batter will be Terrence Long. So Tejada, unhappy with himself as he pops it up, losing another chance for an RBI. Terrence Long, who had played a good portion of the first half in center field, and they moved him over to right. He has the strongest arm of any of the outfielders. He's another young ball player upon whose shoulders Oakland's future rests, if indeed it rests in Oakland. As Gertrude Stein said so many years ago, there is no there there in talking about Oakland. And you wonder if there'll be any A's there. Right. The ownership of the Oakland A's have made no bones about the fact they are very unhappy here. They don't like the ballpark. 
they'd like to move where they would like to go however is technically giant territory at San Jose. Well there's a lot going on up here. The signing of Giambi. What's going to happen to Damon and Isringhausen at well. Can the club win the wild card. And are they going to stay. Giambi at second with two out. Now back. One and two the count to Terrence Long. Long last year hit 288. 18 home runs, 80 runs batted in. And in a sense, this is a pitcher's ballpark for one reason. A lot of foul territory here off the line. A lot of balls that in other parks go into the stands are caught here. One and two the count to Terrence Long. up a point. The Oakland A's lead the American League in hit by pitches. The Oakland A's have been hit 54 times this year. Frank Manichino has been hit 11. Olmedo Sines has been hit 12. Long has not been hit. Two and two. Fouled away. To put it in perspective, Oakland has been hit 54 times. The Dodgers have been hit 26, less than half. Two and two the count to Terrence Long. So a walk, a balk, and a bloop single for a run. A comebacker that got away for a hit. And Billy McMillan's triple, which might have been caught by Sean Green, but wasn't. And it is two to nothing open. And now with Jason Giambi at second, Terrence Long trying to pick him up. Two balls and two strikes. Long has had 29 multi hit games. So he leads the A's in that department. Jason Jambi at second. Two down. And that's a little foul ball off third. Beltry trying to get under it. Can't do it. Green going all the way down to the bullpen and of course that's another pet peeve the idea of bullpens in foul ground where somebody can get hurt and it would appear if you look out towards right center and left center the 388 mark there is plenty of room in left center and right center to put all the bullpens you'd ever want but that's the way they have it here three and two Working awfully hard, making too many pitches. And Terrence Long hangs in there and draws the walk. So Chan Ho has given up two runs, five hits. He has walked two and struck out five. Eric Chavez coming up, the third baseman. Chavez for a month now hitting less than 180. That's a long stretch. He struck out in the second inning. Two on two out. Foul back. Chavez another kid. The A's have great faith in him. They feel that eventually he will develop into quite a ball player. 
only 23 years old. Chasing what looked like a bad ball, and he's in a hole 0 and 2. So Chan Ho Park trying to get out of another jam. He's been in a jam in each of the first three innings. Jambi at second, long at first, two out. And that's full foul right behind Mike Quay down the line. Dodger bullpen has to move around a little bit. That landed near Al Reyes and Jim Lett. So two on, two out, third inning. Eric Chavez. Los Angeles boy trying to do the Dodgers some damage. Jason Jambi at second, Terrence Long at first. Way outside. Eric Chavez graduated from Mount Carmel High School. Been with Oakland now for just about three years. One and two the count. Foul back. That's another thing that's wearing Chan Ho out. There have been a lot of foul balls in the first three innings. So the pitchers are piling up. At the rate he is pitching, he'd have to pitch 185 at least. Way too many. Young hitters. That's the second time Chavez has struck out. Six strikeouts for Chan Ho. The end of three, two nothing eight. Time now for our Aflac trivia question. Besides Jason and Jeremy Giambi, who are the only brothers to be teammates for the Oakland A's? None of the aforementioned brothers, like the DiMaggio's or the Mays or the Aaron's. They don't figure. Well, that young man is well bundled up and got that far away look in his eye. But he's in good hands. Tom Goodwin against Tim Hudson. Way out in front. 0 and 1. A little while ago, we talked about Billy McMillan and how his wife delivered a baby girl, Kennedy. Kennedy McMillan. The reason we bring that up, Tim Hudson and his wife are expecting their first baby the end of this month, and they have the name picked out for her already. Kennedy. The same name as Billy's daughter. Well, they will indeed have something in common. One and two, the count to Tommy Goodwin. Down he goes, splitter. So Goodwin strikes out. Been a tough series for him, and it figures to get even tougher with Barry Zito going tomorrow. In looking at Tim Hudson, ratio of strikeouts to walks, with three strikeouts tonight is 109. So it is better than two to one. It's about two and a half to one. Now Mark Grasolonic. Grasolonic took him to right field, and they'll be hanging the third K in a little while out there. And he's going to take him to right field again. So Grasolonic two for two by going the other way. The only two hits that Tim Hudson has surrendered up to this point. Last night, <laughs> they were having a lot of trouble. 
hang in the homemade cage. And now this young man is working hard to get the third K up there. Almost ready to be hung. Good. Last night, Mulder had seven Ks. That proved to be a bit of a challenge to one of the fans. Okay, number three is up there. Sheffield hit a bullet in the first inning, but right at Eric Chavez, who flipped over to first to double up Grassolani. Ball one. One thing about Hudson, he's tall, 6'1", all elbows and kneecaps, and very, very slow and deliberate. Last year, Bay Steelers stole 24 out of 27. Grassolonic has only stolen two and been caught three times. So he's not going to pose that big a threat. But certainly Goodwin and Green would put a little heat on him. Two balls and no strikes. Ball three. I don't know if you read it in the paper. They were talking about the All-Star game, and obviously they put a microphone on Mike Sweeney, the first baseman from Kansas City. Troy Percival was pitching. And the runner at first was talking to Sweeney. And Sweeney said to the runner, you ought to be able to walk into second base on this guy, talking about Troy Percival. And so Johnny Rollins said, well, okay. And he stole second base on the next pitch. Of course, closers have a tendency to concentrate on the hitter rather than the runners anyway. Three and one. Another strike. Three and two. He's going to be around the plate all night. With his control, uh, 135 innings about. He's given up 10 home runs. Well, watch Grassolonic with one out and a full count. And Hudson is watching him as well. Two to nothing in favor of the A's. A bloop single by Jeremy Giambi scored Johnny Damon, who had walked and was walked to second. Billy McMillan tripled in Hernandez, who hit a comebacker that got away for the other run. There goes Rasolonic. There goes Sheffield, but a bad throw by Hernandez. That is the one big problem for Ramon Hernandez. He does not have a good arm, nor does he have an accurate arm. It is the one thing that has really slowed his progress down as far as being a good catcher. So he is way off the mark. Grassolonic was exposed and easily available for a tag, but it was a bad throw. Four strikeouts for Tim Hudson. And now Sean Green. Ball one. Sean, who had more trouble on the ball hit by Billy McMillan than we've ever seen him have, went to the wall and right, ran parallel to the wall, reached up, and the ball hit the wall maybe a couple of inches. Glove high. And then for good measure, he fell down, and Billy McMillan wound up at third with an RBI. One and off. Two and off. Tim Hudson and the A's leading the Dodgers two to nothing. Fourth inning, two out. Grassalonic at second base. Menachino is on it, and that will be that. So the Dodgers lead Grassolonic at second, and at the end of three and a half innings, it's still Oakland two, the Dodgers nothing.
Remember our Aflac trivia question. Besides Jason and Jeremy Giambi, who are the only brothers to be teammates for the Oakland days? And the answer, you probably guessed it. Sure, Jose and Ozzy Canseco. They played up here together in 1990. Whenever I see Art Howe, the skipper of the A's, I always think about a connection. There was a connection with Ramon Hernandez and C.B. Buckner. I don't know if Hernandez had any feelings about Gary Sheffield striking out and interfering with the throw. But after talking to Buckner, he came over and talked to his manager. Art Howe, in 1994, was the Major League Advanced Scout for the Dodgers. And, of course... All of us who are around in those days will remember 1980 and Art Howe, ball one. The Dodgers in a one-game playoff for the division, playing Houston. Art Howe at a home run, two singles, four RBIs, and Houston won the division title. Hard ground ball under the backhanded attempt of Beltre and down the line. Sheffield will hold him to the ground ball base hit. So Ramon Hernandez drives one between Beltre and the bag for a single, and Billy McMillan coming up. Ball didn't come up. It looked like Beltre had it as far as being in position, but didn't get the glove down far enough. And when he did get it down, it was long gone. So Billy McMillan, who tripled in the second inning, coming up. trying to get started and it has been a problem. McMillan coming over from Detroit. When they asked Art Howe about McMillan, how are you going to use him? He said he'll spell guys in the outfield here and there. He can play the corners and in a pinch center field. And another left-handed bat coming off the bench. The pinch hitters have not done well. Of course, it is an extremely difficult job anyway. But the pinch hitters for Oakland have really been struggling. The last pinch hit by an Oakland player was June the 2nd. McMillan's had one appearance as a pinch hitter and he struck out. McMillan was a teammate of Jason Jambi on the U.S. Pan American Games in 1991. So they're reunited. That was a swing. Third base umpire Tim Timmons brings him and the count one and two. nothing Oakland Chan Ho with a half a dozen strikeouts but losing to nothing McMillan will be 30 in November a little high when he was a teammate with Jason Giambi in those Pan Am games in 1991 he missed the games even though he was on the team he had a dislocated shoulder And that ran away. A lot of movement on that fastball. Three and two. Billy McMillan attended Clemson University. Foul ball outside of first down the line. The Giants are leading the Mariners five to one in the fourth inning. Among other things, Ramon Martinez, a base hit and an RBI. Felice, a base hit for an RBI. Rich really a scoring fly ball, so they've opened it up. McMillan, a long, loud foul, and it remains three and two. talking 
written before about how many foul balls the A's have hit, making extra pitches necessary from Chan Ho Park. And that's inside the bag and down the line. McMillan is going to head for second. Green must throw the ball back to first. And just like that, the A's have run us at second and third, and nobody out. So McMillan has a triple and a double. And the Dodgers in more trouble. Hard ground ball. Karras just missed it, just like Beltry just missed the ball hit by Hernandez. So Johnny Damon coming up. Second and third, nobody out. Jim Colburn is going to go out to the mound to talk to Chan Ho Park and time out. Two runs, seven hits for the A's. No runs, two hits for the Dodgers, who have failed to score up here in 13 innings. And when you compare the pitches, you can see that Chan Ho Park is working twice as hard as Tim Hudson. Damon Menachino and Jeremy Giambi will be coming up. C.B. Buckner on his way out to speed things along. The plate umpire, C.B. Buckner, interestingly enough, we're always talking about ball players coming from all over the world, Japan and Korea, South America, Mexico, etc. C.B. is from the West Indies. He was born in Jamaica in the West Indies and lives in Brooklyn, New York. Johnny Damon walked and struck out. The corners are up, and that's ball one. However, Cora and Grassolana playing halfway. Last year, Damon was really on fire after the All-Star break. Ball two. Last year, following the All-Star break, Johnny Damon hit 386. As he said, they just couldn't get me out. He is hoping to do a repeat performance following the All-Star break this year because he started off so poorly. That's a strike. Down in the Dodger bullpen, left-hander Jeff Williams begins to loosen up. Chan Ho in trouble and making a lot of pitches. Two and one. Ball three. Among the clubs interested in Damon, if the A's decide that they're not going to win the wild card and they're going to lose him to agency, they say the Chicago Cubs. Three and one. Damon, 27 years old. That's a strike. Out of Fort Riley, Kansas. So at third base, Ramon Hernandez. At second, Billy McMillan. And Damon up there now, working on a three and two count with first base open. Damon has only struck out about 10% of the time. He did strike out tonight in the second inning. Foul back. Boy, there's a bushel basket full of foul balls tonight. Chan Ho has to have his pitches moving. But he has given up seven hits and two runs. Arizona, thanks to Luis Gonzalez hitting a big home run, and the D-backs are out in front now, two to one. That's a Kurt Schilling game. Fouled away. Schilling gave up a home run to Scott Spezio, and now Luis Gonzalez hits a two-run dinger 
to put the D-backs in front. Seattle got a run, so the Giant lead is 5-2 in the fourth inning. Second and third, Hernandez and McMillan looking for a ride home. Three and two to Johnny Damon. And he walks to load him up. So the base is loaded, nobody out. Frank Menachino coming up. The stocky second baseman has struck out and flied to right. Kino has never hit a grand slam, in case you're wondering. Good fastball strike, 0 and 1. Minikino has a little power. He has 10 home runs, 44 runs batted in. Counts. So Chan Ho is really struggling. He has Hernandez at third, McMillan at second, and Damon at first. Nobody out. Two to nothing A's and trying to add to it. making too many pitches falling behind in the count. This pitch coming up is going to be number 89 and we're only in the fourth inning. Two balls one strike. Little never. Chan Ho shovels to Kruder for one and that's all. The Manichino is out pushing one runner out at the plate. Hernandez goes down one two and everybody else moves up. So McMillan goes to third. Damon advances to second. Manichino at first. Chan Ho going after the only play he had and shoveled it right out of his glove. So the bases remain loaded. One out. And now it's Jeremy Giambi with Jason on deck. Jeremy, a bloop single and struck out. One for two. McMillan at third. Damon at second. Menachino at first. Ball one. Dodgers and the A's have played 14 times in interleague play. The A's have won eight of the 14, doing their best work right here. They've beaten the Dodgers five out of six times here. And there's Chan Ho again behind. Two balls and no strikes. Jeremy batting 302. His brother's hitting 322. And that's low. But now Chan Ho is one pitch away from forcing over a run. And Jason waiting on deck. So McMillan, Damon, and Menachino taking their lead. In there. second, Damon to third, and McMillan brings it over.
change is brought to you by Jiffy Lube. If it's been over 3,000 miles since your last oil change, go to Jiffy Lube. It only takes minutes, and you never need an appointment. Can Hall Park made 97 pitches, and Oakland jumped on him for five runs and eight hits. And, of course, there are runners at first and second with one out. So Chan Ho worked only three and a third innings and could suffer more damage as Jeff Williams now was brought in to pitch to Miguel Tejada and then Terrence Long. So that's the longest single you'll ever see. Jason Giambi hitting one high off the wall a good 370 feet away for a two run single. Jeremy is at second base. So the brothers Giambi are out there and Tejada at the plate. Ball one. Tejada struck out and popped up. So this is his third chance to pick up a run. Jeff Williams two and one in his tenth game. And a broken bat bloop single. Can you believe? The one run scores to make it six to nothing Oakland. Jeremy Giambi brings it in. Jason goes to third and the run of course is charged to Chan Ho. A broken bat single by Miguel Tejada. So the Dodgers are very unlucky tonight. Although then again they always say luck is the residue of design whatever that means. But however you cut it, they have had a balk, a dribbler up along third, a comebacker that got away, a triple that might have been caught by Sean Green, and now the broken bat single by Tejada. So six to nothing in favor of the A's, and Terrace Long up there, first and third, and one out. Breaking ball miss. Ball one. Long grounded out and walked. So the Dodgers will have more road games than home games in the second half. The Dodgers, as you know, if you follow the ball club, have struggled on the road. There are four games under 500. Not so bad because of that winning streak. But now starting off the second half losing six to nothing last night and losing six nothing tonight. So it is a tough time for Jim Tracy and company. And that's a strike. So Jeff Williams out of Australia preceding Prokofiev. Luke Prokofiev pitches tomorrow night, actually tomorrow against Barry Zito. Tunes it. Tejada has stolen five out of seven. Jason Jambi down the line from third. Two and two. Curveball hit to center. Goodwin back to the track almost to catch it. Tagging up is Jason Jambi to score easily. And that makes it seven to nothing. Oakland, a five run inning. So long hangs in against a left handers curveball. And it's a long fly ball for an RBI. Good at bat. That run is charged to Chan Ho. And now we can close the door. The Chan Ho Park charged with giving up seven runs and eight hits. And Eric Chavez, the ninth man to come up in the inning. And it's a high chopper to Alex Cora on the bag, and that'll do it. But it's the A's who hang the high five. And at the end of four, Oakland seven, Dodgers nothing.
Friends, here's your chance to win a new Dodge Grand Caravan. To enter, you send a postcard with the name, address, and daytime phone number to this address. If your name is selected and a Dodger hits a Grand Slam in the fifth inning, you'll win a new Dodge Grand Caravan. Tonight's contestant, Vince Bayarelli of Woodland Hills. Well, Tim Hudson is a top hombre anyway, and now he has a seven to nothing cushion to lean on as he goes to work in the fifth inning. So Chan Ho Park charged with seven runs and eight hits. And for Chan Ho, a really disappointing performance. Most runs that Chan Ho had allowed this year, five. That's a strike to Karras. Kurt Schilling just gave up a home run to Garrett Anderson. And it is five to two, the Giants leading Seattle. Anaheim trailing Arizona now three two. Got that on his foot, so timeout. Seven runs, nine hits for the A's. No runs, only two hits for the Dodgers. Digging hard, but Manichino throws him out. And you can see Hudson, the top dog, since the the end of April. He started off the year two and three, and his earned run average was over six. So if your earned run average is over six in April, and it is now 1.8, you get an idea of just how well he's been pitching. He's been dynamite. Now Paul LaDuca. Right. LaDuca robbed of a hit on a good play by Eric Chavez, and you can see his eye, that left eye, is still slightly swollen, very badly bruised, where he was hit by a pitch. in the first inning then another run in the second and five in the fourth so the Dodgers right now are represented by Paul LaDuca they are beaten up on two on deck Adrian Beltry the batter. We talked before about the great splitter that Tim Hudson has and a great changeup. And all you have to do is look at your scorebook to realize there has been one fly ball. That was Chad Cruder who flied to Johnny Damon. So his stuff is downstairs and working. That's a strike. Beltry struck out in the third inning. Tomorrow at 105 here, Barry Zito and Lou Prokofek. Full foul. 0 and 2. 
Meanwhile, Mark Grasolonic, who has had two singles, the only two hits the Dodgers have, both of them to right field, and he's gotten as far as second base once. And that's been it. The Dodgers have not gotten another man on. So Beltry strikes out a second time. Tim Hudson picks up five strikes. Out. And it is seven to nothing A. Here's the upcoming schedule tomorrow and Sunday on radio only Monday and Tuesday on Fox Sports Net 2 and then the Dodgers come home and host Milwaukee Wednesday night and Thursday afternoon on Fox Sports Net 2 and of course every Dodger game on Fox Sports AM 1150 with Ross Porter and Rick Monday and we go now to the bottom half of the fifth seven nothing Oakland. And the batter is Ramon Hernandez, ball one. Hernandez singled off Chan Ho's glove and scored, singled in the fourth inning, and was forced at the plate. And lifts one to Goodwin in left center. One away. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Dodgers may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express consent of the Dodgers. The Dodger pitching with Barry Zito pitching against Luke Prokopek. Then the Dodgers go to Pittsburgh. Kevin Brown will pitch on Sunday. Eric Gagne will pitch on Monday. And that brings Terry Adams back on Tuesday. And then the Dodgers come home. One ball and no strikes to Billy McMillan. Big night with a triple and a double. Ground ball off the glove of Belfry. Recovers and gets him. down in the fifth inning and the batter Johnny Damon we told you at the beginning of the game how the Dodger luck has been running where even when they have the workout on Wednesday Eron Boca Chica severely sprained his ankle Dave Tuttle now passes along the word that Eron Boca Chica has had to go on the 15 day disabled list another body blow to Jim Tracy Jim Colburn and the Dodgers especially facing two left handers in three games up here. Alex Cora did not play last night. This will be his chance to play. He figures to sit down tomorrow. Jeb Reveille will take over again. The uh, hook is in there for a strike. One and two. But you know last night in the aftermath of the game realistically Jim Tracy said you know what you're not going to do very well when you can't score. And here they are tonight and they can talk all about the runs that Oakland has but they still haven't scored and it's seven nothing Eve. Oakland leading seven to nothing as we go to the sixth inning and protecting the lead why the pitcher Tim Hudson has gone to the strikeout he got green then he got Beltry then he nailed Goodwin came right back to get Sheffield and polished off Beltry a second time so five strikeouts and Tim ready to go to work on Alex Cora that's a strike on one he has not walked anybody that is his strength indeed and a minimum number of pitches really. He's gone averaging about 10 pitches an inning. It'd be a walk in the park. One and one. And that's going to be pulled and just over Manichino's glove into right field. So a base hit for Alex Cora. Three hits allowed, all three ground ball base hits into right field. And now Chad Kruder. Chad 
Cruder is the only Dodger so far to really hit the ball in the air. He hit a fly ball to center field in the third inning. at first as two singles and a double and a couple of RBIs. Jeremy Giambi the DH has a single and a walk and knocked in two. So the brothers have taken care of four of the seven. up here right now Oakland trying to win their fifth in a row remember that the A's won the division last year and with young pitchers like Hudson Mulder Zito they expected to do very well started off losing eight of the first nine in their homestand 18 of the first 26 games they played overall. But they have turned around now and played well. And they certainly look more like last year's championship club than the dismal team at the start of the year. And of course, Seattle has just made a mockery out of the division race, leading Oakland by 19. So the walk to Cruder, his first. And second and nobody out. Tom Goodwin the batter. Goodwin grounded to second and struck out. Tom 0 for 2. Batting 246. Right. Sean Green. Gary Sheffield along with Jack Clark trying to get as close to Tim Hudson as they possibly can. They're hanging out standing up on the corner of the dugout trying to pick his move apart. That's not normally where they hang out. And they're seeing quite an exhibition so far anyway. 0-2 to Goodwin. So Tom strikes out a second time. It has been a tough two games for him. Strikeout number six for Tim Hudson. Don't forget the Dodgers host the Milwaukee Brewers. A brief two-game homestand Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon. And remember, a Thursday, a 1-10 game. All kids 14 and under in attendance receive a collectible Dodger comic book. Compliments of Sports Chalet. So give us a call, and we'll see you Wednesday night and or Thursday afternoon. Now Grasoline, twice single to right field. At second, Cora at first, Cruder. One away. Fastball pulled a third. Chavez down to Menachino. No further play. So first and third, Cora becomes the first Dodger to get to third base. And Cruder is erased. Rasolonic 
reach second base in the fourth inning on a stolen base after Sheffield had struck out. So now finally the Dodgers have a runner 90 feet away. Gary Sheffield lined into a double play and struck out. Sheffield had an infield single last night, so one for six. Seven nothing Oakland. Sixth inning, two out, ball one. Luis Gonzalez. He is a team photo all by himself for Arizona. He had a home run earlier. He has just doubled in Craig Council. Arizona leading Anaheim 4-2, to two, top of the eighth inning. And the Giants holding on to a 5-2 lead in Seattle. That missed. is walk one. He has Cora at third, Rasolonic at first, and a 2-0 and count on Gary Sheffield. Now 3-0. and On deck, Sean Green. So not only does he give up two walks, both of them come in the sixth inning, and he has loaded the bases for Sean Green. So Sheffield at first, Grasolonic at second, Cora at third. You can't really call it an anxious moment for Art Howe, but he is studying the possibles. Green has struck out and grounded out. Sean coming in was one for six. And as you can see, he's had four slams. 0 for two tonight. One for eight against Hudson. And a drive to right field, and that's gone. A grand slam home run by Sean Green. And the Dodgers get back in the game. A7, Dodgers 4. And now they're on the phone to the bullpen. So Sean Green hits his fifth grand slam home. plate and with no doubt about it I mean he just clobbered it it is the second Dodger Grand Slam this year Mark Grasolonic had a Grand Slam in Houston so now Rick Peterson going out to the mound to talk to Hudson so four RBIs with one swing of the bat and the Dodgers get back in the game two walks set it up Green holding on to the batting gloves. Of course, at home, he would give them to some kids near the Dodger dugout. Jeff Tam and Mark Guthrie are loosening up in the bullpen. Guthrie, the left-hander, of course. And Eric Carros, the batter. So Hudson gave up a single to Cora, walked Cruden, struck out Goodwin, got Grasolonic to hit into a force play, walked Sheffield, and the first pitch to Green, a grand slam. Off speed, 77 mile an hour change, 0 and 1 to Carroll. So the Dodgers trying to get off the floor. So first off speed, then he comes back hard down and away. 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes. 
held up. Ball one. And it was in the dirt, so C.B. Buckner will put a new one in play. So the Dodgers were thoroughly blank last night and threw five innings. So for 14 and two-third innings, nothing. And then Green slam. Garris takes low, two and two. So Green and Sheffield, remember, they were close as they could be with Jack Clark watching Hudson. And it paid off. Sheffield walked and Green hits the grand slam. That's a strike. Frozen on the fastball. However, Sean Green gets the Dodgers back in the game. With the fifth grand slam of his career, it makes it Oakland seven, Dodgers four. Arizona added another run. Reggie Sanders knocked it in. So they lead Anaheim 5-2. Giants doing the same to Seattle. Houston polished off San Diego. Frank Menachino has struck out, flied to right, hit into a force play at the plate. So he's 0 for 3. And lifts one to Green. One away, bottom of the sixth inning. Say tomorrow on FX Saturday Baseball, catch a special sports telecast as they show you what baseball broadcasts of the future might look like. They'll bring you the Padres and the Astros on a special edition of FX Saturday Baseball. Coverage begins at 5 p.m. on FX. Here come the brothers Giambi. Jeremy singled a sounded to drive in a run, struck out and walked. On deck, brother Jason. Ball one. Oakland seven, Dodgers four, bottom of the sixth. Williams picking up for Chan Ho Park. Meanwhile, Tim Hudson still in there, and Sean Green gets the Dodgers back into it. Two and one. stayed out. And he walked in. So Jeremy draws the walk and Jason coming up. The crowd tonight, about 10,000 more than last night, paid attendance, 28,627, and that's about 3,000 more than their average per game. Oakland trying to win their fifth in a row and trying to rejuvenate the franchise as well as the city here. And here is Jason. Two singles and a double. Jason with as long a single as you will see as he hit the top of the left center field wall. Right up there. Sheffield had it kicked back and he was backed up by Tom Goodwin who held it to a single. Good curveball. One and one. Yeah, that's just another reason why the fans hope that somehow or other Jason will be signed. Fastball, whack to Goodwin. And he picks it off nicely. Boy, was that thing ripped like a two iron. And back to first goes Jeremy. So Jason, a tough out. It's a bullet speared by Goodwin. That was a good play by Tom. That thing was really taken off. Right about there. Right. So Jason.
Jason Giambi is now three for four and the hardest ball he hit outside that long single was the out. And Miguel Tejada coming up. Struck out, popped up, broke his bat and got a bloop single and a run batted in in the five run fourth inning. That's a strike. Oh and one. Good fastball, 0-2. Tejada homered last night. Got a lot of power, 20 home runs. Before he's finished, he will have hit more home runs than any A's shortstop, and that includes Philadelphia A's. Foul tip, though he's still there. See A shortstop, Eddie Juice 116, Bert Campanera 68, and Miguel Tejada 84 already. 0 and 2. Strikes out to Hata. No runs, no hits, a man left. And at the end of six, Oakland seven, Dodgers four. Fox Sports Net 2 presents Dodger Baseball, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines celebrates 30 years of freedom. And by Pacific Bell from the SBC Global Network. We're on it. The Coliseum here in Oakland, the scene of game two of the three game series. It was seven nothing Oakland. Sean Green hit a grand slam in the sixth. So the Dodgers feel they're back in the game and Paul LaDuca leading off in the seventh. Ball one. The Hudson is backed up. Jeff Tam and Mark Guthrie throwing back of him in the pen. LaDuca two ground balls. Hudson, who walked two in the sixth inning, and that's certainly not like him, now starts off behind to Laduca. Two balls and no strikes. And now he's behind three and oh. So that great control that he had for five innings is suddenly deserting him. And it is not a matter of fatigue. He has not worked hard at all up to here. In there. I mean, he's averaged 10 pitches an inning. Three and one to LaDuca. Bouncer up the middle for a base hit. So the Dodgers showing signs of trying to come back, and the batter will be Adrian Beltry. So whatever Hudson had that kept the Dodgers thoroughly quiet for five, they're now trying to catch up to him. Adrian Beltry has struck out twice. He's 0 for 2. That's another thing now. He was missing. He fell behind a Sheffield and walked him. He fell behind a Cruder and walked him. He fell behind a Laduke and gave up a base hit. And Art Howe is coming out to the mound. He doesn't like the idea that his youngster is losing control, pitching behind, and he wants to find out what's going on. Two 
Tim Hudson two complete games prior to tonight and that's going to be it. He's had enough. He only made 74 pitches but in the last one inning plus he obviously lost it and we'll be back. Tim Hudson made 76 pitches and the area where he was so strong was in the walks category for five innings. He didn't come close to walking anybody and then suddenly he lost it in the sixth inning. That cost him four runs on the grand slam and he was behind a Laduca gave up the base hit and when he missed on the first pitch to Beltry Art House said that's enough. So they bring in Jeff Tam. The old story with Tam they say if you're looking for a ground ball he's the guy you want. He is one and three however and an ERA of more than three and a half. Two and oh. Since he inherited a one and O oh count he's on his own. If he had inherited a two and O oh count and Beltry walk then that run would be charged to Hudson. But Tim has to worry only about Laduca as far as his earned run average is concerned. There's the sinker, but he's missed. But suddenly now it's 3 and 0. That's a strike. Tam was a non roster invitee to spring training last year. He had been with the Mets and the Indians, signed with Oakland, and turned in a pretty good year. Er earned run average last year, a little more than two and a half. He has a great sinker. That's where he gets all the ground balls when it's working. And there's one. The Tejada to second, Manichino to Giambi, and there's that ground ball we were talking about. So you put the ad in the paper if you want a ground ball called Jeff Tam and just like that a double play six four three two down and Alex Carr the batter Minichino did a good job because Laduca was really barreling in on him but he was able to turn it anyway and the batter now Alex Cora. on the corner with a sinker. So you can close the book on Hudson since Laduca was doubled up. Hudson winds up with four runs and five hits allowed. Seven strikeouts and a couple of walks. And that's hit to the gap in right center. So that double play was huge. And Cora on his way into second with a two out double. So Alex Cora so he gets a lot of base hits for a guy who's only hitting 209. He's had seven doubles, three triples, and four home runs. So he got a ball down, and that's his wheelhouse. And the batter now, Chad Kruder. Adrian Beltry hits into the double play and then Cora doubles. Otherwise, the Dodgers might have had a run to get a little closer. Jeff Tam trying to get the last out here. He's a local boy. He was born in Fullerton. He was signed by Jim Marshall and Carlos Pasquale. Up, however, in Melbourne, Florida. That's where he graduated from high school and he went to Florida State. Oh, well, he's behind now, 2 0 to Chad Kruder. Tam first came up to the Mets in 98, then again briefly in 99. He was in one game with Cleveland and then came over to Oakland last year. Jeffrey Eugene Tam. He'll be 31 in the middle of August. That's a strike. 
left-hand has really hurt him, and of course you saw Cora walk up there and double. Left-hand batters against Tam last year hit 360. It's the classic case, strength against strength. His strength, the sinker, and left-hand hitters usually light the ball down. That sinker missed. Three and one. On deck, another left-hand hitter, Tom Goodwin. Mark Guthrie is ready if they need him down in the bullpen. Four at second, two out, three and one to Cruder. Little foul off to the left out of play, three and two. This is a huge pitch now. Cruder trying to get aboard so that Tom Goodman would represent the possible tying run. Guthrie down in the pen, watching and waiting. Cruder had the only fly ball against Tim Hudson until Sean Green hit the grand slam. And now Cruder trying to pick up Cora. Miguel Tejada in a crouch down there at shortstop. Three and two. Big pitch. And he walked him. So that might force Art Howe's hand. Let's see. So Tam got the double play, then gave up a double, now a walk, and Goodwin is going to be called back. That's Chris Donalds putting the protection on his right elbow, so Donalds going to come up and bat for Goodwin from the looks of things. Goodwin had grounded out and struck out twice. So one left-hand hitter will bat for another. Again, strength against strength. Donald's hitting for Goodwin. Tom Goodwin struck out twice tonight, twice last night. He was one for six. So they'll call up Donald. Chris Donald's with a home run and four runs batted in this year. He is four for 20 as a pinch hitter with two runs batted in. Trying to loosen up in a hurry. So Beltry keeps thinking about the double play ball. That really put the blocks to the inning. Laduca led off with a single. Then Beltry hit into the twin killing. Then the double by Cora. The walk to Cruder. And Art Howe now making sure that Donalds is in the game and making sure Guthrie is ready. And now each manager is well aware of the other's move. And it looks like they will now take Donalds out of there. So we'll be back right after this. But the Dodgers were down at one stage seven to nothing. Chris Donalds announced as the pinch hitter for Goodwin and was called back. And so Goodwin will now be replaced by Donalds, who will be replaced by Grissom. So it turns up to be Marquise Grissom going head to head with Mark Guthrie. And in the past, Grissom one for five against Guthrie. Donalds 0 for one. Goodwin 0 for three. So take your pick. Mark Guthrie, you may remember, was with the Dodgers from 1995 when he came over from Minnesota with 96, 97, and 98. The so Guthrie brought in to try and get Marquise Grissom. Guthrie is six and one, but a high ERA of a little more than four and a half. So Grissom now becomes the potential tying run with two on and two out. And 
that's a strike. I know you're thinking about it, so I can tell you that Guthrie has allowed four home runs this year. Grissom has hit 15, two of them as a pinch hitter. Now back. So Guthrie comes in, throws strikes, and he has the count 0 and 2. Seven nothing to seven four, and Art Howe having to go to his bullpen twice. In the dirt, nice save by Ramon Hernandez. So the veteran Guthrie going head to head with the veteran Grissom. And the ball game on the line here, although we are only in the seventh inning. Four at second, Cruder at first, two out. Got him. Looked like a high fastball up around the shoulders, and down goes Grissom, so Guthrie wins that one. And at the end of six and a half, it's seven four, Oakland. Now for a look at what's ahead on the National Sports Report after the game, let's go to the Fox Network Center. Oakland leading the Dodgers seven to four as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Marquise Grissom now in center field taking over for Tom Goodwin. And it'll be Terrence Long, Eric Chavez, and Ramon Hernandez against left-hander Jeff Williams. Terrence Long grounded out, walked, and had a scoring fly ball to cash in Jason Jambi in the fourth inning. A shot up the middle. Grasolonic is not going to quit. Tried to get the ball to Cora to make the throw. Couldn't do it, but he was sure trying. So it's a base hit for Terrence Long. And a heads up thought by Grasolonic. Watch, catch it, try to give it to Cora. Couldn't quite do it. But he was thinking and crying. That is hit number two off Williams. Hit number 10 for the A's. And Eric Chavez struck out twice, hit into a force play. Fastball for a strike. Final score in Anaheim, Arizona 6, Anaheim 2, Kurt Schilling beat Ismael Valdez. Home runs, Luis Gonzalez, Mark Grace, Scott Spezio, Garrett Anderson. Tomorrow, when the Dodgers are here, Barry Zito and Luke Prokopek. The Arizona Angel game will have Randy Johnson and Jaron Washburn. The Giants are still leading 5-2 in the eighth inning in Seattle. And a towering smash into deep right center field, and that is gone. Whoa, did he kill that thing. Oh, wow. So Eric Chavez hits one upstairs. Much the delight of the crowd. Chavez 12th home run. He has 48 RBIs, and that opens it up again. Now it's 9 to 4 in favor of the A's. So the Dodgers had a look. They had the potential tying run of the plate with Grissom, and now they're down by five again. Chavez, 23 years old, and he's another of these baby A's whom they feel will blossom into a solid star. They got a bunch of them, but they have to be patient. Hernandez with a single off the glove of Jan Ho Park and a single to left. And fly to center, two for three. Pop 
popped up. Back of first. Harris angling down the line. One away. Don't forget the Dodgers take on the Colorado Rockies, a four game homestand beginning Thursday, July 26th through Sunday, the 29th. All kids 14 and under in attendance for the first game on Thursday, July 26th. Receive a Dodger batting helmet. Compliments of Farmer John. So call 323 224 1 hit. Interesting talking about the Colorado Rockies. Once the Dodgers finish that series with the San Francisco Giants, they play 58 games. And the only team in that 58 game stretch in the division, the Colorado Rockies. They play them 10 times. So the Rockies are going to be very important. Of course, the final 19 games, every one ought to be a thriller. The final 19 involved San Diego, San Francisco, and Arizona. Right down to the wire. Billy McMillan, triple, double, rounded out. Shot up the middle, base hit. So he's close to the cycle now, a single, double, triple. the batter now the leadoff man Johnny Damon Johnny Damon has walked twice and struck out twice and he has scored each time that he walked Johnny hitting 240 sounds like a name from the old radio show Johnny Damon private eye Dodger bullpen, Giovanni Carrara. Good curveball hit up the end of the stick. Cora has to hurry to get him. On the play, McMillan advances to second. Menachino coming up, struck out twice, fly to right, hit into a force play. Menachino 0 for 4. And now Jim Tracy is going to bring in Giovanni Carrara, right hander against right hander. So Carrara coming in to pick up for William. Jeff gives up at least two and of course McMillan at second is his responsibility. We'll be back. Oakland back up with a comfortable nine to four lead and Giovanni Carrara trying to get the last out here in the seventh inning. Frank Menachino who is old for four and then the brothers Giambi. So it's been Chan Ho Park for three and a third, Williams three and a third, and now Carrara. Miguel Tejada dreaming about hitting one out. He's one for four with a broken bat single as he sits there in the dugout. But in the far corner, Eric Chavez hit the two run home run here. And now here's Menachino. In the corner on one fastball with pretty good movement oh and to the count Frank Manichino born in Staten Island New York and still lives back there. Majored in education at the University of Alabama. And a very big man on campus. Billy McMillan.
McMillan at second base. He's had a big night, a single, double, and triple. One and two. So we arrived up here in Oakland, and all we read and everything we heard was about Oakland's poor offense. They had wonderful pitching, but a dreadful offense. Oh, really? So far in the series, they've scored 15 runs on 27 hits. Change got him. A soap bubble, and Menachino was frozen. However, the A's add two on the home run by Chavez and lead 9-4. leading the Dodgers nine to four as we go to the eighth inning. By the way, the Dodgers plan to salute the 20th anniversary of Fernando Mania with the Fernando Valenzuela bobblehead night, compliments of Las Palmas and all fans in attendance. Sunday, July 29th, the Dodgers take on the Rockies at 510. They'll receive a limited edition, highly collectible Fernando bobblehead dog. Jim Messier out of Queens, New York. Right-hander, 31 years old. Surprisingly, last year, came over to Oakland and won 10 in a deal with Tampa Bay. Sear is a fellow who really had to battle back physical disadvantages. Jim was born with two club feet, and he had to have two operations before he was 10 years old. And the operations left his right leg an inch shorter than his left leg. And with all of that, Messier has battled his way to have an extensive major league career. He's been with Seattle and the Yankees. Then he spent three years with Tampa Bay before coming over to Oakland. So he gives up the base hit. The Dodgers trying to come back. Rasolonic's third hit. Gary Sheffield lined into a double play, struck out, and walked just ahead of Sean Green's grand slam home run. Arizona beat Anaheim 6-2. And the Giants are leading Seattle 5-3 with one out in the ninth inning. Mike Cameron at the plate facing Rob Nen. Masir does not throw that hard. He's in the high 80s. He is not one of those guys with the big 90s. He's got a screwball. That's his number one pitch. Now he's behind to Gary, 3-0, and oh, and Green on deck. That's his right. Masir, when he does use that screwball to his advantage, it works very well against left-handers who hit only 204 against him last year. Almost hit Sheffield, so here comes Green again with another opportunity to get the Dodgers back. He came up in the sixth inning with the bases loaded and two out, and Sean hit his fifth grand slam home run of his career. For Sean, it was his 21st home run. He has 68 runs batted in. So again, the Dodgers look to him to try and get him back in the game. They were down 7-0. Now they're down 9-4. Ball one. Jim Messier working on Sean Green. He's behind 2-0. and oh. So Oakland's problems all started when Tim Hudson started walking people in the sixth inning. And Rick Peterson going out to try and help. To 
Bernard Howe studying. He had one challenge. Remember when Donalds came up to hit for Goodwin. So he brought in Guthrie, who faced Grissom and struck him out. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jeff Rebele, along with Dave Hansen and others, waiting to see if they'll get a call. And Green up there with a count his way, 2-0. Rebele and Hansen are the only two left on the bench to be used. Fouled away. Two and one to Sean. Though the Giants have beaten Seattle 5-3. Arizona beat Anaheim 6-2. So the Dodgers must come from behind to stay where they are or fall four and a half games back. And Messier is really struggling. Three and one to count. And the batter, Green with Karras on deck. And he walked him. So the Dodgers have the bases loaded and nobody out. And here comes Karras. He's got two slams in his career. And down in the pen, they immediately got Jason Isringhausen, who is really a closer. And we'll have to get up and warm up and front of him. So a 7-0 lead was cut to 7-4. A 9-4 lead is now a little shaky as Karras checks in. And he almost threw that thing away. Ball one. Well, Messier has not given any relief. He's given up a base hit and two walks. So you have Grasolonic at third. Sheffield is at second. Green is at first. And Karras at the plate. Paul LaDuca on deck. And that's off the plate. So now there's 28,000 was cheering open. Now they're all over Messier. Two balls and no strikes. And you know if it's in the zone, he's gonna look and take two and one. his grand slams against Montreal. Full foul, off-speed pitch. Two and two the count. Last year, Messier was very effective when Jason Isringhausen faltered. Now tonight, it's Messier struggling and Isringhausen throwing back up. Two and two the Cavs. Fouled away. Eric is 0 for 3 tonight. Two ground balls and struck out. Last night, he was 1 for 4, a double. So 1 for 7 in the series. Adrian Beltry still thinking, I'm sure, about that double play he hit in two in the seventh inning. Check swing foul. And so Beltry does what Sheffield and Green did in the sixth inning. He's as close as he can get with being out on the field and listening to Jack Clark. That seemed to pay dividends to Sean Green because he was standing right where Beltry is now before going up and hitting the slam. Two and two to Karras. Hard ground ball by Tejada. One run scores, two run score, and again the Dodgers are back in the game, albeit they are trailing by three. So that was quite an at bat for Eric Cowes. With the bases loaded, Messier threw a breaking ball in the dirt, a fastball off the plate, a fastball over, and one up and in fouled off, another fouled off, and then another one fouled off, and then a breaking ball pulled for the base hit. So Karras a single and two RBIs as Grasolonic and Sheffield score. 
And now the batter is Laduca. And the fastball missed. Ball one. So seven nothing and nine four. And each time the Dodgers have battled back. Now they're down nine six. Nobody out. Two on and in the dirt. Messier can't throw a strike now. He's really struggling. Talk about struggling. Art Howe isn't doing too well either. Two and zero oh to Paul Laduca. Nine six Oakland eighth inning. just can't buy a strike. He's one pitch away from loading them up again and Adrian Beltry on deck. Nobody out remember. That's a strike. So a big at bat for Karras fouling off all those pitches and then getting a base hit. And now a big at bat for Laduca. Three and one to count. Two singles, two walks have meant two runs. Green and Karras on the lines. Big high bouncer grabbed by Chavez to get Laduca. And I'll tell you what, Chavez almost lost that in the lights. That high bouncer made him flinch, but he made a wonderful play. But the runners move up, one out. Here's the bouncer. And you can almost see him close his eyes as he gloved the ball. So a big play by Chavez. Green and Karras move up a notch. Art Howe is heading for the mound, and Adrian Beltry is the batter. And Isringhausen is going to be called in. So Jason Isringhausen called in from the pen. And Jim Messier kind of storming off. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Nine six Oakland, one out, eighth inning. Dodgers at second and third. And Jason Isringhausen will go head to head against Adrian Beltry. Isringhausen was named to the American League All Star team last year. He was six and four, but he had 33 saves. And now Isringhausen has 17 saves, and he finds Green at third, Karras at second, and one out. In the dirt, ball one, one and oh, and they'll put a new ball in play. So Beltry struck out twice, hit into a double play. If you remember back in 1995, Isringhausen was going to be one of the golden boys of the New York Mets, but he had shoulder and elbow injuries and was traded to Oakland. is basically a power pitcher. He just threw that hard breaking breaking ball once in a while but his stuff is to blow you away. One and one. Ground ball gobbled by Chavez to make the play the run scores. But that's another nice play by Eric Chavez. The one on the high bouncer in the lights and now he smothers and takes a hit away from Beltry. Beltry getting the RBI as Green comes in. Now Dave Hansen is going to come up and bat for Alex Cora. So the Dodgers only had two men available Dave Hansen and Jeb Reveille and Hansen is the batter. Rick Peterson gone out to talk to Isringhausen to make sure he knows how to pitch him. Hansen is 0 for 2 in the past against Jason Isringhausen. The three runs in the inning are charged to Jim Messier, and it has been a tough night for Art Howe, even tougher maybe on Jim Tracy, but Howe 
had himself a seven nothing lead. The Dodgers battled back with four. Then he had a five run lead and the Dodgers have cut that to two. So it's nine seven Oakland. And Tracy has almost played all of his cards. He has Jeff Rebele left and Rebele is going to get into the game anyway to finish up for Cora. So there's the name Rebele the only man left. Ball one. Eric Karras at second base. Nine seven Oakland in the eighth inning. Last year, left-handers hit 242 against Isringhausen. There's the fastball, and he missed. So it's been the lack of control, really, that has bothered the A's the most. Five walks. That's a strike. Good pass. Ball two and one. You get that fastball in the 90s, mid to high 90s too. There's the curveball, and Hanson almost fell down, taking a rip at it. Nine seven A's, two out, two and two the count. Hanson trying to pick up Harris and a crowd of 28,627 really into it now. Curveball got him looking. So Hanson had to be looking fastball and he was frozen on the curve. The Dodgers scramble and get three, but they're still two bucks short. Fox Sports Net 2 presents Dodger Baseball, brought to you by Pennzoil. Protection under the toughest driving conditions. By Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines celebrates 30 years of freedom. And by your Southern California Lexus dealer. We're heading to the bottom of the eighth inning here in Oakland. A wild ball game. Dave Hansen will take over at third base. Adrian Beltry will slide over to play shortstop. And Matt Hurgis coming out of the bullpen to try and get some outs here in the bottom half of the eighth. So Matt Hurgis, the workhorse. And he'll be pitching to the brothers Giambi and Miguel Tejada. Jeremy Giambi has two walks and a single. Knocked in two runs. Boy, that was some pitch that Isringhausen made to freeze Dave Hansen. Two balls and two strikes. Dave had to be looking fastball. And Isringhausen broke off public enemy number one. Fastball hit down to Karras. One away. If we have a chance, we'll show you that multi-million dollar pitch. Just take a look at this breaking ball. You're looking fastball. It's up there. And oh, my gosh. Not a thing you can do about that. Just tip your hat and move along. So one out and Jason Giambi the batter. Jason Giambi dribbled one up along third for a base head, doubled into the right field corner and singled high off the left center field wall. Last time up, killed the ball, hit a low line drive, and Tommy Goodwin made a leaping one hand backhand catch of it. So Giambi hitting 323. Last year's MVP having another big year. Fastball. When the Dodgers bat in the ninth, they have Chad Kruder, Marquise Grissom, 
and Mark Grassolani. If anybody gets on, Gary Sheffield, and the way this one is going, don't go wandering off. That's a strike. Two and one. Luke Prokopek tomorrow afternoon against Barry Zito. Then the Dodgers move on. Brown will open up against Pittsburgh on Sunday, Gagne Monday, and then Adams Tuesday. So then Wednesday, when the Dodgers come home against Milwaukee, Chan Ho Park. Fastball, and he unloads on that thing. Oh, did he hit that? Jason Giambi hits his 20th home run. That means he has four hits tonight. Two singles, a double, and a huge home run. Four hits, three RBIs. He's really something. They had a deal in the spring, six years, $90 million. They thought that would be okay. Carlos Delgado got a little more at Toronto. But then Jason said, yes, one other thing. I want a no trade clause. And they said, no way, no trade. He said, no deal, it's off the table. So now he is so popular up here. Well, he should be. But we will see whether he has any future here at all. So Jason Giambi. So a pretty big night. Giambi, two singles, a double, and a home run. His brother, Jeremy, has two walks and a single. Jeremy had three hits last night when Jason drew blanks. So 10-7 in favor of the A's. Tejada takes one up around the chin. 3-0 the count to Miguel. Struck out, popped up, singled, broke his bat, and struck out again. Three and oh. That's a strike. Three and one. For Matt Hurgis, roughed up for the home run. That would be the fifth one that he's allowed this year. down there. He just reached over the railing, found the glove. Tejada hit one out last night. So the A's had Tejada's blast last night in their 15 hits. Tonight, a two-run home run by Chavez, a bases empty home run by Jambi. The Dodgers counted with a grand slam by Sean Green. 10-7, Oakland. And we're in the eighth. Ten runs, 13 hits. So they've had a total of 16 runs and 28 hits and three home runs against the Dodgers so far. For Jason Giambi, having four hits tonight, that's the third time in his career he's had a four-hit game. Another foul ball. Yeah, add him up. It was 2 nothing, 7 nothing, 7 4, 9 4, 9 7. Now it's 10 7. Bottom of the eighth. Arizona won and the Giants won. Another foul ball. So the Dodgers are three outs from losing their third in a row, and the A's are three outs from winning their fifth in a row. And for 
Jim Tracy and Jim Colburn. It was a very disappointing night for Chan Ho Park. He went only three and a third innings and gave up seven runs and eight hits. After that, it was Jeff Williams, Giovanni Carrara, and now Matt Hurgis. So Hurgis keep going fastballs in. Tejada keep pulling them foul. Three and two. One out. Shortstop watching Oakland shortstop really hack away. Beltry's had a tough night with the bat. 0 for 4. Striking out twice, hitting into a double play. While Tejada just keeps hacking and fouling them off. Mark Grassolani has had three hits tonight and scored twice. And finally, Tejada wins the battle. So the batter now, Terrence Long, the left-hand hitter, has rounded out and walked. He's had a scoring fly ball and singled up the middle. His base hit up the middle was that heads up effort by Grassolani to grab a ball on the grass in center field and flip it back to Cora to try and throw it at first, but he couldn't do it. Time. Oakland 10, Dodgers 7. 10 runs, 13 hits for the A's. Seven runs, eight hits for the Dodgers. strikes to Terrence Long. And they're keeping an eye on Tejada. He's stolen five out of seven. Then one stolen base so far in the series, and that was by Mark Rassolani. to Terrence Long. A couple of youngsters up a little bit late tonight, but it is Friday night. Dodger fans in a cluster. Two balls, no strikes to Terrence Long. Whoa, way out of the zone. Ball three. with a record of seven and six in his 39th game. Dodgers last night got six innings out of Adams, but tonight only three and a third inning. That's out of the strike zone. So Terrence Long never really had much of a pitch to swing at. So a home run followed by two walks. And the batter will be Eric Chavez. Meanwhile, Jim Colborn going out to the mound to see if he can't get Hurd just back on the strike zone. 
Eric Chavez coming up has struck out twice, hit into a force play, and then hit a two-run home run in the balcony directly above the 388 sign in deepest right center field. With all the television cameras these days, you notice there's an awful lot of talking in your glove. Everyone covers up now, just in case. Burgess had the glove right up over his mouth, talking to Colbert. And of course, Cruder with the bird cage on, you can't read his lips anyway. Eric Chavez not only had that two run home run, but in the wild top of the eighth inning, he made a wonderful play on the ball hit by Laduca, which he lost in the lights, and he was still able to throw the Luca out. And then he made another wonderful play on the following ground ball hit by Belcher. So two on, one out, 10 7 A's. Ball one, smothered by Kruder. Runners hold on. Couple of kids from the Dominican, Beltre and Tejada. And even talking to Tejada, Adrian Beltre had the glove over his mouth. Can't be too careful. One ball and no strikes. Just now struggling with the strike zone. Of course, it's nothing like giving up a 425 foot home run to make you struggle with the strike zone. Right after the home run by Giambi, he walked to Hata, walked long, and he's behind 2 and 0. There's a strike. 2 and 1. Jason Giambi, the MVP from last year, putting on an MVP night. Four hits. Jason Isringhausen, freezing. Dave Hansen with a great curveball. That fastball evens up the count two and two. Tim Hudson started. And six innings charged with four runs could win his 10th tonight if they're able to quiet the Dodgers in the ninth inning. That's up the middle down to Beltry. Kicks it but covers on the bag. Too late at first. So Adrian moving over to play shortstop had a perfect double play ball but couldn't do it. Jim Tracy is going to go out and discuss it with Jeff Kellogg. Beltry handles the ball cleanly. It's a perfect double play, but he kicks it. Then recovers to kick the bag, and then the off-balance throw didn't have much on it. Close play, but Chavez beats the throw. So Beltry unable to make the double play, a shortstop would, and the batter is Ramon Hernandez. see just how important that misplay by Beltry is. Hernandez has two singles. Now back. When the Dodgers bat in the ninth inning, they have Chad Kruder, Marquise Grissom, and Mark Resolani. There's only one other position player left. That's Jeff Rebele.
been a tough inning for Matt Herjic. Off speed, that thing got away. Two and one. So Miguel Tejada is at third. Eric Chavez is at first. Run in the inning on the home run by Jason Giambi. And so her just working on Hernandez, his sixth hitter in the inning. And he's behind two and one. Billy McMillan with a single, a double, and a triple on deck. And that's going to be hit through, and another run is in. Tejada will score. Stopping at second is Chavez, and it is 11 7 Oakland. And they have come right back. So both teams showing bounce back. Dodgers bouncing back twice, and each time Oakland bounced back again. So Hernandez, third hit. Billy McMillan hit a drive to right field. I think Green would catch a lot of times, but not tonight. And then the next time up, Billy doubled just inside the bag at first. And then in the seventh inning, he singled. So with a triple, a double, and a single, here's Billy McMillan. Two on, two out, 11 7, Oakland. Curveball. Got it over. It was 7 nothing, and the Dodgers got four. The A's came back with two. Dodgers came back with three. A's have come back with two again. There's the last man to hit for the cycle. Eric Chavez. On one. McMillan with his speed the extra base hits in the cycle are relatively easy another curveball and another strike the most home runs and thinking about the cycle most home runs that he hit in the major leagues. Four. Hit four for Detroit. One ball and two strikes. So after a bunch of curveballs, comes back with a high fastball and the count two and two. So in a wild game, the deuces are wild. Two balls, two strikes, two on, two out, two in. 11-7, Oakland. And a curveball put him away. However, the A's come right back with two, and at the end of eight, A's 11, Dodgers 7. Well, in a wild ball game, best summed up by the fact that Sean Green had a grand slam, the fifth of his career, and the flying Giambis, as they call him up here, total five for eight, five RBIs, and Jason Giambi had the big night. Two singles, a double, and a home run. His brother Jeremy had two walks and a base hit. So they put on quite a show driving in five. And the A's out slugging the Dodgers 11 7. Jeb Rebele, the last of the Mohegans down there with a bat in his hand. And the Dodgers will have Chad Kruder, Marquise Grissom, and Mark Grassolani. Kruder flied to center and walked twice. Ball one. Mike Magnanti is down in the pen, a left hander in case there is trouble with Green. On deck, Marquise Grissom. 1-0. Oh. Ball two. Isringhausen came in. 
got Beltry on a fine play by Chavez, went two and two to Hanson, and then broke off the best pitch of the night, that great curveball. Now he's behind two and oh to Cruder. That's a strike. pitch and Chad one after it two and two this Ringhausen is 28 he's big six three two ten fastball goes down on a good fastball. A reminder, be sure and catch the Southern California Sports Report coming up after the game. So Isringhausen has faced three batters and struck out two of them. And now Marquise Grissom, who came off the bench in the seventh inning after Donalds had been announced to bat for Goodwin, Grissom batted for Donalds. Guthrie came in and struck him out. Ball one. Isringhausen's uh, numbers, by the way, strikeouts to walks, better than four to one. Fastball, hammered to center. Johnny Damon, however, has room. a long out to center and the Dodgers after scuffling all night are down to their last out. Mark Grassolani two singles to right and a single to center three for four. Eleven runs four. Seventeen runs and twenty nine hits against the Dodgers. Eric Chavez with a two run home run tonight, but he also made a couple of dazzling plays. Jason Giambi with four hits. They have been standouts for the A's. Billy McMillan in left field with a single double and a triple. So it has been a feast for some of the A's. Fastball strike one and one. Well, the Dodgers, seven runs, eight hits. And they're still down by four. One and one. Breaking ball strike. Kind of like a slider as opposed to that big curveball that froze Dave Hansen. One and two. Certainly never quit. Down seven nothing. Battle back seven four. Down nine four. Battle back nine seven. But now it's eleven seven, and they're running out of outs. Two and two to Grassalani. Got him. So Jason Isringhausen faces five batters and strikes out three of them. The player of the game, Jason Jambi. A big night. Two singles, a double, a home run, three RBI. Once again, the final score, the A's 11, the Dodgers 7.